Go ahead, Jared. Okay, Deborah. Can you hear me? Yes, Natan, how are you? Baruch Hashem. Okay, good. I may put you on mute because uh, I've got stuff going on in the office, but I'm listening in. No problem. We don't take it personally. Navid is here, Natan, so. Hi, Natan. How are you? Yes, sir. How are you? Simon, how are you doing? How are you? Mr. Ord, how are you? Doing good. Did I not give you messages in your office? What do you mean? Call you? No, I've they give him messages. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been so crazy. Like every day. I've been Either. crazy busy. Every day. Every day. Okay. Plus, I haven't been in the best condition. What's wrong with your foot? No, no, no. No. My kids were away. Liz and I went out almost every night. <laughs> Is that new? No, we are not. No, when my kids are away, I mean, I take that time to get more you know, spiritual. Because now we go to school off and I'm starting. And... I would love okay. to be in show. All right, let's go. <laughs> test love, test love. On that love. note, Rabbi. Test love, Ahmed Base. Oh, by the way, Bart may be late. Okay, yeah, he did say that. Okay. Test love, Ahmed Base, 15, B, 3. Uh, so we've been we've been uh, we've been struggling with this Mishnah. Uh, the Mishnah was talking about shechting with items other than a than a knife. Okay, and the Mishnah seemed to imply that from its language of hashochet, which implies bidiyevet. In other words, hashochet doesn't mean this is how you should do it. Hashochet means one who did it this way. So the language of hashochet, one who did it this way, is a bidyevid language. So the Gemara said, okay, so hashochet implies bidyevid. And on the one hand, okay, we understand why maybe it's bidyevid when it comes to the sickle, because the sickle has two sides, and we want to make sure you won't use the wrong side. But why is it bidyevid when it comes to these other things? Because after all, we seem to have a mish, uh, we seem to have a brisa. And the Brisa says that when it comes to these other things, it's lichat chila. You know, so why are we suggesting that it's bidyev? I'm just going to move this over here out of the way so we can see everybody. Okay. So, um, so why is it suggesting that it's why suggesting that it's bidyev? It would seem to be would seem to be lichat chila. So the Mishnah wanted to resolve it by saying, "Thank you, Jared." Right. The Mishnah wanted to resolve it by saying, "Lokashia." Kan betalush, kan b'mechuba. The first distinction that the Mishnah made was between talush and mechubar. Talush means something which is separated from the ground. The mechubar is something which is attached to the ground. So we understand something which is separated from the ground. So what would that mean? Let's say that there is a, a flint, right? A sharp stone that you could pick up, right? So that's not mechubar, that's talush. So a lichat you could shech with that sharp stone and every, you know, and there wouldn't be a problem with it. On the other hand, let's say that the stone was stuck into the wall. And here you had to take the behema. I right? tried this during, during yeshiva break. You it's tried this impossible. on what? On a cow to check it with a, a rock that was stationary. Oh, you did? That okay. was impossible. Okay. So I don't know where you, where you Okay. <laughs> All right, right. So what's the idea here? So the idea is you take the behema and you you have to move the you can't move the the sharp stone because the sharp stone is part of the wall but you can move the behema move the neck of the behema and sever it that way even though john couldn't do it there are people who are real shokti who <laughs> yeah, probably could do it no. <laughs> all right so right so that's the idea that so that's how the that's how the gemara wants to differentiate between the bidyevid language of our Mishnah, which says hashochet, hashochet, if you shechted, right? The one who shechted that way, which implies bidyevid, and the lichatchila language of the brisa, the lichatchila language of the brisa, which says bakol shochet. So the Gemara wanted to resolve it by saying it's not a problem. Our Mishnah, which is bidyevid, is talking about something which is mechubar. When it's mechubar, it's bidyevid, right? Why would it be bidyevid when it was mechubar? Precisely for John's concern, that it's not so easy to do. In other words, if I have a flint I can hold in my hand, 
Okay, so then, you know, that's a little bit easier. But if I have a flint that's stuck into the wall and I have to move the tzavar of the animal, so that's a little bit, that's a little bit more lebedek. So therefore, that's bidiyevet. In other words, if I did it and it was a good shechita, okay, it's acceptable. But lechatchila, I shouldn't do it, right? That was the difference between talush and mechubar. Is there a simple definition between, like, just a silly question, I'm just for my own edification. So, like, uh, when you say attached to the ground, a rock that's attached to the ground, would you still be including a heavy rock that can be picked up, but you're not picking it up to do the action? No. Like, is so, there a definition of picking up? I think, so, right, so, m- right, so mechubar, mechubar would mean along the lines like something which is sort of built into the, you know, built into a wall, let's say. Permanent. Right? Well, permanent. Uh, we're going we're gonna to come later on tonight to whether it's permanent or not permanent. We're going okay. yeah, we're gonna, to come to discuss that a little, bit, a little bit more tonight. Right? It's a good question. But for the Sorry, Ali, I took one of your questions. Is this from like the now, whole... Now you only get three more. Thing <laughs> No, Simon, Simon's asked the question whether this is, uh, well, connected to the concept of schach on sukkis, where we talk about if it's mechubar lekarka, it's no good. It has to be separate, right? The idea is the same idea, but it's a completely <coughs> different halachic principle. In other words, I can't take a branch from a tree and bend it down and put it on top of my sukkah and say that's schach. Because schach is not allowed to be mechubar lakarka. It has to be detached, right? So we have a concept of detached and mechubar when it comes to schach, but it's a different concept here. I mean, it's the same definition of words, but a different halakha concept. So you could take a bamboo shoot, sharpen it, and if it's attached to the ground, you could use it to shut. If you have a, if, if you have a bamboo the growing end. up from the ground, and you uh, sharpen that bamboo, right? And even even if you can move the bamboo, because you can move the bamboo, right? right. You shech the animal, it's bidiyevet. In other words, lichat you shouldn't do it. Bidiyevet, if you did it, it's considered it's considered acceptable. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so let's go for it. I'm just curious. I'm just. Right, yes. We're not up to the halacha. We're not up to the halacha yet. Right. We're just. We're, we're just. just the we're just trying to resolve <laughs> yeah. the seeming contradiction between the Mishnah and the Brisa, where the Mishnah seemed to imply that shechting with these items was bidi eved, and the Brisa implied that shechting with these items was lechatchila. And the Gemara resolves it by saying, we're talking about two different situations. The Mishnah, which is Bidyevit, is talking about where it's Mechubar, it's attached to the ground. The Brisa, where it's Lechatrila, is talking about where it is Talush, where it's separate from. Okay. So then the Gemara asked the question, and the Gemara said, um, how, how do we know that there is this idea that if it's something is mechubar, if something is attached to the ground, that it is a bidyevet at best? So the Amar Rav Kahana, because Rav Kahana said as follows, Hashochet b'mechubar lekarka. Rav Kahana brought the following statement. Hashochet b'mechubar lekarka. If you shech with something which is mechubar lekarka, what's the halacha? So there's two opinions here. There's the opinion of Rebbe and the opinion of Rebbe Chia. The opinion of Rebbe is puzzle. And that's, I, I, I think that's what, uh, that's what you're referring to, right? Puzzle. That, and that's the halacha. If you look, if you look in the Gemara, you see by where it says Rebbe puzzle, there's a ches, a little ches right by the, right by the word Rebbe. You see it in the Gemara? That's telling you that's what the halacha is. I don't know if you guys see it. Yeah? No? Yes. Yes, no? Okay. Um, so Rebbe Posel. Rebbe says no good. However, Rebbe Chia, what's Rebbe Chia's position? Machshir. Rebbe Chia says it's, it's okay. However, Adkan lo kamachshir, Rebbe Chia, ele bidiyevet. Aval lechatchi lo lo. Okay, good. So what did we say? So we said, all right, we have the following. Our Mishnah is bidiyevet following Rebbe Chia. 
The b'raisa is lichat because the b'raisa is dealing with talush, the mishnah is dealing with mechum. Our gemara now asks the following <coughs> question. Says our gemara, b'may ukimta. All right, how did you, how have we established the Mishnah? In other words, if we had to say, who was the author of the Mishnah? Who would we say it was? It's, it's Rebbe Chia, right? Rebbe Chia, okay? Because what does our Mishnah say? Our Mishnah says, number one, we're talking about Bidyeved. We're talking about Ashkita Bidyeved. And number two, we're talking about something which is Mechubar. Who allows a shechita b'dieved with something which is mechubar? Rabbi Chia, John's right. Rabbi Chia. So when the Gemara asks the question, "B'may ukimta," how have we established the Mishnah? It answers, "Ki Rabbi Chia v'dieved." Exactly what John said, right? That our Mishnah is following the position of Rabbi Chia, and he's only allowing it. Says the Gemara. Okay, very nice. However, Elahad what about the following Brysa that we learn? Bakol Shochtim, Bain Bitalush, Bain Bimachubar, Bain Shahasakin Lamala Vitsavar Behema Lamata, Bain Shahasakin Lamata Vitsavar Behema Lamala. Right, we have a Brysa that says what? Anything goes, right? This this brisa, like Natan, you're not happy with this brisa because what does this brisa say? <laughs> the brisa says, "Bakol shochtim, you could shecht with anything. Bain betalush, whether it's talush, whether it's separate from the ground, bain bechubar, whether it's attached to the ground, whether the knife or the object is above and the animal's neck is below, the way in which shechit is normally done." Or the other way around, whether the neck of the animal is above and the sharp object is below, even though that's not something that we generally do because we worry uh, that the pressure from the neck of the animal is going to, is going to invalidate the shrita. Nevertheless, according to this b'raisa, it's all acceptable. So says the Gemara, Mani, who could possibly be the author of this b'raisa? Who could possibly be the author of this price? In other words, we're dealing with. Wasn't me. Two... What? <laughs> definitely, definitely <laughs> not you. It's definitely <laughs> not you. All right. It wasn't me. Right? It wasn't right? It might be John. Right? <laughs> Who could be the author of this price? In other words, we have, we have two possibilities. Right? We have two possibilities. Who are the two possibilities? Right? We have two possibilities. Who are the two possibilities? Either Rebbe or Rebbe Chia, right? Those are the two possibilities. That, those are the two positions that we know. Those are the two rabbis who were mentioned in the Brisa, which was brought by, Rabbi, by Rebbe Kahan. But it would make sense that Rebbe would definitely not be the right person because his viewpoints are clear whether it's beforehand or after the fact. We're not so sure on that. Well, what does Rebbe say? He says... Neither. No, he says neither are... Okay, so, right, right. Whether it's... Before or after. Good. So John is so, so John that we have to make the Mishnah work as we do along these uh, routes of putting words in uh, to make it work for us. The, the Remember, other. it's a code. All right. So we have to we have to fix the code. Decipher. No, we have to fix the code. Decipher. But wait, John. Go be, make it the other Rebbe be, because if, before you do that, before you do that, we have this brand new Bryson that we're introduced to. Okay. Yeah. Right. This is we're going to call this the Hammerman Bryson. Right? <laughs> everything is mutter. Right? Every, everything goes. Maybe, Sorry, Natan. I love it. Uh, what? Why would we assume that the price is a correct price uh, and we're in correct in the morning? Because we have a misora that this is an acceptable price. In other words, wh whether we paskin like this price or not is a different story. Look, right? You're, you're, if you're asking whether we paskin like this price, the answer is no. But the fact that it's an authoritative price, meaning it has to have somebody. There has to be somebody who, who said this brisa. There had to be somebody who authored this brisa. And we're, we're now trying to go back and figure out who it is. So we know we have, we have two rabbis to deal with. We have Rebbe and we have Rebbe Chia. It's got to be Rebbe Chia, like I said, because he is at least giving some indication that something's allowed. But, but, why, but why can't it be Rebbe Chia? I'm saying it, it should be him. But why, wait, how could it be him? 
can't be him either because he plays. No, because he is saying in public, as we discussed some weeks ago, last week, last last two weeks, yeah, two weeks. that he might just want to be a little more machmir in public, but truthfully, he is allowing it regardless. No, so you're think you're you're actually referring to a different case, yeah. right? To Rav Huna's case where he was yes. doing that. Okay, so you might be on to something. But I want to build a little bit to get there, okay? They're having a, uh, an argument. Well, these two okay. Rabbis, right? So let, let's, take, let's, take the, let's take the first steps, okay? Based on what we know so far, which is that Rebbe's position is if you shecht with something which is mechubar, what's the halacha according to Rebbe? No good. No good. No good. Rebbe Before, after, it. in between. Possible, Before, possible. after, in between, it doesn't matter. Rebbe passes it. All right. If you shecht with something which is mechubar, according to Rebbe, forget it. According to Rebbe Chia, if you shecht with something which is mechubar, what's the halacha? After the fact, it's according to, at least the way we understand at this moment, but I think correct. Really the way it. we understand at this moment, he says after the fact, it's, okay. yeved, it's good. But I don't think lechatchila, it's, lechatchila, it's not good. Which the way we understand, he couldn't write the Mishnah, but which means he couldn't write the. Rebbe can't write the Mishnah because Rebbe passels a shechita like this. And even Rebbe Chia can't, could not have written the b'risa. Why? Because Rebbe Chia says it's only permissible b'dyevet. What does our b'risa seem to say? Our b'risa says lechat chila. Bakol shochtim, you can check with everything. Right? Anything but a saw. <laughs> right, anything but a saw. And nail it, right, a nail and a right? Nail, right. Nail, and a right? <laughs> but anything, right, anything, anything else you can check with, okay? So the Mishnah, right? So the Brisa seems to say, the Brisa seems to say, Mutter Lechatchila. So it can't be Rebbe, and it can't be Rebbe Chia. But I think it can be Rebbe Chia because I don't remember what <coughs> number or letter, but I know that they were having this argument. Or the debate is about what's Bechuba. And the deba- the we're thinking too. they're debating about one thing, and I think they're actually debating about a different scenario. I think okay, Rebbe try, Chia is... Tr- try and refine that I'm a try little to, bit. Try to to here. I think Rebbe Chia is actually not saying it's okay after the fact. I think he is saying it's okay before and after. Go ahead. And I think he's... And Rebbe is, is saying also that it's okay after the fact. But I think the, art, the the question isn't being understood correctly. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Okay, so let's 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 try. I'm going to rephrase it a little bit. You're, because you're, after the fact, everything is always okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's, not true. that's not true. Um, almost everything is okay if you have a loophole, right? We're not trying to find true. a lawyer, and a lawyer can find a loophole. And not Todd, not Todd has closed every loophole we've okay. ever. <laughs> All right, no loophole. Right. All right, so so let's let's do it this way, okay? I mean, I think John is. John has his finger on, on the pulse here. Yeah. All right, John has his finger on the pulse, the right? So what are we saying? We're saying as follows. So listen to what John is, listen to what John is saying. John, it can't be Rebbe. Everybody agrees it can't be Rebbe. Right. And at first glance, it can't be Rebbe Chia yeah. because we understood the machlokes between Rebbe and Rebbe Chia we understood that to be within the parameters of Bidyev. But what about if that wasn't the case? What about if that wasn't the Machlokas, which I think is what, what John is, yeah, what John is what saying. What if we say that Rebbe, that Rebbe Chia allows it even Lichatchiva? Why then was the Mishnah talking about Bidyeve? To show how strongly Rebbe disallows it. In other words, there are, there are like three steps, if you will, okay? There's, there's no good no matter what. That's, that's puzzle. No good no matter what. There's good Bidyeve and not good Lechatchila. And there's good no matter what, right? Those are the three, those are the three steps. But the mission was written as almost good no matter what. No, the mission is definitely saying it's good no matter what, except for like these three Peace. items. <laughs> no, no, the, no, no, no. The Mishnah, the Mishnah is saying it's bidyevet. Bidi, okay. In other words, that's the language of the Mishnah. The first word of the Mishnah is hashochet. But not the second part of it. 
No, the second part of it we haven't even grappled with yet, John. We'll well, that, I'm sorry, that's what I right? was No, saying. the second part of it we haven't even grappled I mean, with yet. <laughs> We're still focusing on the beginning okay, of the so, Mishnah, so. all right? The, the word hashochet, with, with which the Mishnah opens, implies bidiyevet, right? <laughs> One who shechted. Not, not this is how you should shecht. But one who shechted, right. one who shechted, okay, then it's okay, that's bidiyev. So we understood, right, let's say we have, we have our three things here, no good completely, good bidiyeved, but not lechatchila, and completely good. We thought the machlokes was with, between these two. In other words, Rebbe took this position over here of no good completely, and Rabbi Chia took this position over here of bidyevet okay, but not lichatchila. But he never says it's not okay before. Correct. He just says it's okay after. In other words, we no one questioned him. We assumed that. that it was within these, right? That it was within these two. The completely no good was Rebbe's position, and the bidyevet good, but not lichatchila was Rebbe Chia's position. Right? Now, but if that's the case, we can't explain this new b'risa because we can't use Rebbe and we can't use Rebbe Chia. So the Gemara comes along and the Gemara is going to now reframe their machlokas. In other words, rather than narrowing it to these two ideas, it's, be- it's a machlokas which is wider. Meaning, when Rebbe says it's no good, what is Rebbe talking about? It's no good no matter what. He's clear. When Rabbi Chia says it's good, what is Rabbi Chia talking about? I think he's good no matter he's what. He's saying it's good no matter what. If that's the case, why did we initially think they were arguing about a Bidieve situation? Because it was brought up that the Rebbe said no before and no after. And Rabbi Chia just answered the second part where he said it's okay after. He never said it wasn't okay before and it wasn't questioned whether he thought it was okay or not okay before. He just addressed that one issue. Okay, so after- why did he address that one issue? So the Gemara is going to tell us he addressed that one issue to teach us how much Rebbe objects to this. In other words, that, that Rebbe objects so much that even Bidyevit, he says it's no good. Whereas that's how much Rebbe objects to shechting with something which is mechubar. That if you shecht with something which is mechubar, Rebbe says, I don't care, it's no good no matter what. And Rebbe Chia, on the other hand, Rebbe Chia said, well, I, I disagree. Now, when Rebbe, Chia, when Rebbe Chia disagrees, we understand that at least initially to mean he disagrees, it means bidyevit, it's okay. But now we're seeing that can really mean even lechatchila, it's okay. I think that's what he's. I think, that and were, that's and that's that's, that's, that's how the Gemara. That's how the Gemara so is going works. to resolve it. So okay. Okay. So now, so we have. Let's, so let's just let's follow along like this. We began with a Mishnah which was Bidi Eved, okay, and we said, "Who is the author of that Mishnah? Who is the Rabbi of that Mishnah? It's Rebbe Chia, and it's and it's talking about Mechubar and it's talking about Bidi Eved, okay." Then we bring this brand new brysa where everything goes. And what do we say about this brand new brysa? Who is the author? Can't be Rebbe, can't be Rebbe Chia. The Gemara comes along and says, well, actually it is Rebbe Chia, right? It is Rebbe Chia because Rebbe Chia's position is not just Bidiyev. Rebbe Chia's position is even Lechatchila. And the only reason that Rebbe Chia mentioned Bidiyev is because he wanted to stand in contrast to Rebbe, who says, even Bidyevet, it's not good. But in actuality, Rebbe Chia says, it's even good Lichatchila. So who's the author of our new Brisa? The author of our new Brisa is Rebbe Chia, right? Wait a second. Wait a second. Who's the author of our Mishnah there? Rebbe Chia is, right? In other words, first we said Rabbi Chia was the author of our Mishnah, because our Mishnah was talking about Bidi Yevet and Mechubah. Now we reinterpreted Rabbi Chia to say, no, Rabbi Chia is really talking about Mechubah and Lichat Chila. So, and he's the author of the New Brisa. Well, if he's the author of the New Brisa, if, we've re- if we have reinterpreted Rabbi Chia to make him the author of the New Brisa, so what's coming back to bite us? 
Who is the author of the Mishnah? Because we thought Rabbi Chia was the author of the Mishnah. Now we reinterpreted Rabbi. Now we reinterpreted Rabbi. The Mishnah doesn't state that it's not okay before the fire. No. I understand we interpret the mission to say because we're saying Hashokhan is after the fact, right? Because it's after the which which treatment. immediately invalidates before the fact. I don't know why would no that does. They wouldn't mention the they wouldn't mention after the fact. If, but if you read the whole Mishnah later, well, the, the right, second, right, but don't go on to the next yeah, part of the we're not, really we're not on to <laughs> we're not on to that second part of the mission. It's only four sentences. Right, I know that. But it's a bad point. Okay. Sentences. So so you hear the problem of the Gemara. So basically, step one. We say, who's the author of our Mishnah? Rebbe Chia. It's Bidyevid, and it's Mechubar. Question on that. What about this brand new Brisa? Who's the author of this brand new Brisa? So then the Gemara says, okay, we're reinterpreting Rebbe Chia. Hey, Leo. We're reinterpreting Rebbe Chia, and what are we saying? We're reinterpreting Rebbe Chia to say that Rebbe Chia is Lichatchila. He's Mechubar and Lichatchila. And since he's mechuber and lechatchila, guess what? He can be the author of the new brisa. But if he can be the author of the new brisa, then he can't be the author of the mishnah, mishnah anymore. So we're stuck, said the Gemara. In other words, okay, we can reinterpret Rebbe Chia to make Rebbe Chia the author of the new brisa. But the minute we do that, we lose Rebbe Chia as the author of the mishnah. So who's the author of the mishnah? You hear, the, you hear what we're doing mm-hmm. here? It's a little bit, little bit convoluted, I guess, or complicated, circular a little bit, right? Step one, we said Rebbe was the author of the Mishnah. Rebbe Chia was the author of the Mishnah. Then in step two, we said, no, nope, Rebbe Chia is really the author of the Brisa. And now we're at step three, which says, well, if Rebbe Chia is the author of the Brisa, then who's the author of our Mishnah? So... By, by reinterpreting Rebbe Chia, we haven't really gained anything. We have an author of the Brisa, but we don't have the author of the Mishnah. <laughs> and so are we still stuck on the fact that the Rebbe cannot be any of these authors? Hold on, hold, hold on. Okay, let's see. Okay, so so the I, I want you to look. Um, uh, I want you to look from. You see where the gray bar is? No, you see where the gray bar is? One, two. Three, four lines down from the top of the gray bar. All right, where the word on the line, three words from the end of the line, it says Mani. You have it? Okay, so this is saying who is the, this, we've just quoted the Brisa where everything goes, and the Gemara says Mani, who is the author? And the Gemara begins with the assumption. Lo Rebbe v'lo Rebbe Chia. It's neither one of them, <laughs> right? That's the that's the assumption, right? Why? Because e Rebbe Chia. If it was Rebbe Chia, what did we say about Rebbe Chia? How have we interpreted Rebbe Chia up until now? The Eved in lechatchila lo. What does Rebbe Chia say? Rebbe Chia says only be the Eved is mechuber good. What does our brisa, our everything goes brisa, say? Yeah, no, even know. even lechatchila mechubar is good, so it can't be Rebbe Chia. And e Rebbe, if it can't be Rebbe either, why? Because e Rebbe di Eved Nami lo. So the Gemara is going to answer like John wanted to say tonight. John la Olam Rebbe Chia. Guess what, guys? Says our Gemara, it's really Rebbe Chia. In other words, we're going to interpret. We're going to reinterpret Rebbe Chia. Olam because Rebbe Chia believes even lechatchila it's good. I right, wait a second. We just saw he disagreed with Rebbe in the case of Bidi Ebed. So why are you telling me that he even agrees lechatchila? Why did the Gemara then bring the case Bidi Ebed? If I mean, if he agrees if he says it's okay lechatchila, why wasn't that the case where they argued with each other? So the Gemara answers, Vahai de Kamifligi Bidyeved Lahodiacha Koho de Rebbe. And the fact that they disagreed in the Bidyeved framework was to show us the uh, how strongly Rebbe objects. That Rebbe is saying it's puzzle even Bidyeved. But what is Rebbe Chia's real position? Rebbe Chia's real position is 
Yeah, it's good. It's good b'diavid, but guess what? It's also good lechatchiva. That's Rabbi Chia's position. So this is okay. Right now, the Gemara is going to say, okay, but you didn't gain anything. The Ella masnisin diktani hashochet diavid in lechatchila lo mani. Okay, so now that you've interpreted Rabbi Chia, so who's the author of our Mishnah? Because what does our Mishnah say? Our Mishnah says b'diavid. Yes, lechatchila. No, who's the author of the Mishnah? Lo Rebbe, velo Rebbe Chia. Why? E Rebbe Chia. Because if you want to say that the author of our Mishnah is Rebbe Chia, how have we reinterpreted Rebbe Chia? Afilu lechatchila. They say Rebbe Chia agrees that lechatchila it's good. Our Mishnah is saying be the evidence. It's good, not lechatchila. E Rebbe. If it's Rebbe, the evidence lo. So in other words, okay, very nice. You can interpret Rebbe Chia so he can explain the everything goes b'risa, but then we lose him as the author of the Mishnah. And we can't use Rebbe as the author of the Mishnah. So who's the author of the Mishnah now? So the Gemara is going to say, Lo li olam Rebbe Chia. That what? That it is Rebbe Chia v'afilu lichatchila. Right, that it's Rebbe Chia and it's Lichatzchila who must nisin diktani hashochet, and our Mishnah which says bidyevet. Who is that authored by? Rebbe. That's authored by Rebbe. How could that be? How could that be? Could that be? What, did, what did Rebbe seem to say? Nothing. Rebbe no. seemed to say it's no good no matter what. Right. So Are that not done. Sorry. <laughs> so the Gemara answers, and the Gemara says, Kashya de Rebbe a Rebbe. Right? How can you tell me it's Rebbe? Rebbe Kahana, right? Rav Kahana brought a brisa where Rebbe said, No good, puzzle, I don't care, be the Evid, no good. Right? And now what do we want to say? And now we want to say, oh, But Rebbe could be the author of our Mishnah who says, Be the Evid, it's good. It, how can you do that? Rebbe, Rebbe can't say in one place it's not good be the Evid, in another place it's good be the Evid. How could Rebbe say two opposite things like that? Unless Rebbe's talking about two different. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was going off. I knew right? that was going If Rebbe is talking about two <laughs> different circumstances, it would work. How could Rebbe be talking about two different circumstances? Okay? So we are going to introduce a new concept here, all right? We have the following. We have shechting with something which is talush, meaning detached from the ground. Like I pick up a piece of flint, completely detached from the ground, and I shech with that piece of flint. That's scenario number one, okay? The opposite end of the spectrum, I have scenario number three. What is scenario number three? Attached Scenario to number three is something which always was attached to the ground. Meaning, I carve out of a mountainside, right? I take a chisel and I hack out of a mountainside a very sharp piece. In other words, it was never, it was never talush. It was always mechubar. Okay? So one, scenario one is completely separate. Scenario two is completely attached. Scenario three is completely attached. What scenario two? Was attached and removed. Was removed and, and then reattached. Reattached, yeah. yeah. Removed and reattached. What would that be? Give me an example of that. You can't reattach no. a rock. I no, take like a, a knife or sharpen it and replace it. Right. I take it out of the ground, you put it back in the ground. <laughs> I take or I take an I take a knife, but I take a knife. And I stick the knife in the wall. Yeah, because that's what you do. Right? Right, I stick the knife in the wall. So I now have the following three scenarios. I'm shechting the behema with a sharp stone, completely detached. Okay? What's, who, who says that's good? Everyone. Everyone. Everybody good. Okay? Scenario number two. I'm shechting the behema by moving the behemoth's neck over a knife that was separate, but I've stuck it into the wall. 
Okay, so what's the halacha? So Rabbi Chia says, that's fine. No problem. Even well, what, what does Rebbe say? Rebbe says, <clears throat> but the evidence okay, but not lechatchila. Scenario number three. Where does Rebbe say that? Wait, this, is, this is what we're thinking. This is what we're in, how we're interpreting oh, okay. it. So we're scenario reading. number three. What's scenario number three? Scenario number three is, I have, I've chiseled out of the side of the mountain this sharp stone. In other words, it was never separate. It's always been part of the mountain. And I shecht using that sharp stone, right? I shecht using that sharp stone. Who says what there? Yechia says, okay, and Rebbe says, no. Rebbe says, okay, and Rebbe says, no way. And Rebbe says, no way. And Rebbe says, no and Rebbe says, no, and Rebbe way. says no way, right? So I have Rebbe able to say two different things by Mechubar, because we're talking about two different kinds of mechubar. One is a mechubar that started out separate and is now reattached. And one is a mechubar that was always attached. In the mechubar, which is always attached, Rebbe says it's puzzle. That's the case Rebbe Kahana brings. Rebbe says it's puzzle no matter what. In the mechubar, which was reattached, Rebbe says, bid the evidence, okay. That's our Mishnah. That's our Mishnah. I feel like you okay. need a standing ovation for that. that okay. So what happened? Right. What, what? <laughs> because we then have we to do on Monday. Tomorrow. This is much more. Then we will have tomorrow. All right. I mean, Elliot's got a good point, right? It would be much easier if they wrote what they meant. And the truth is, they did. They did. Right, we're the ones who are struggling with it, right? They did write Rebbe Rebbe knows exactly what they meant. Exactly right. They knew, ex in other words, the authors of the Mishnah knew right. exactly what they, right? It's, and it, they were around, we'd ask them, and they were right? In the Gemara, we're just struggling to work backwards and to make sense out of it, okay? Is the Gemara okay. going to come to give an explanation for why, you know, what, what, what the basis for these different positions are? Is the Gemara going to give us an, a reason for... Yeah, why does it matter whether it was Mechubar and was, became not Mechubar and was, re, you know, all of that? that yes, so the answer is yeah, yes. Yeah, that, yeah, that, okay. Right, the, ans the answer is yes. Natan is asking if we're going to find out... And well, that's what, what I wanted to Rebbe who, Rebbe who completely disqualifies something that's always been Mechubar, why? What is he, you're asking what he's basing himself on, right? Not talking? Right. Yeah, okay, I'm we're trying to get, figure we're... out what the nafkamina is here of this difference between, uh, you know, between the different rabbeim. Yes, correct. We're going to get, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to their sources, okay? Okay, <clears throat> back, back in the Gemara for now, okay? So what have we, what have we established right now? We've established these three scenarios. Okay, the scenario of completely detached versus always attached versus in the middle, something that was detached and is now reattached. Okay, those are the three scenarios. The Gemara asks the question, one, two, three, four, five, six lines up from the bottom, and the Gemara says, umina temra, and where do you come up with this idea, dishani lan, that there's a difference Bain mechubar meikaro, letalush ulavasof chibro. In other words, how do you know there's a difference between something which has always been attached and something which was detached and reattached? How do you know there's a difference between the two? We 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 created these three scenarios to be able to explain Rebbe, but what's the logic for saying that there's a difference between the two? So the Gemara answers Desanya because of the following Brisa. Listen to what this Brisa says. The Brisa says, Hashochet b'muchni. What is a muchni? A muchni is a wheel, right? You're going to shecht with a wheel. Oh, yeah. Right? That. right? What does it mean you shecht with a wheel? You take your knife and you tie your knife. Think of a, think of a, you know, a wheel that moves uh, based on the water, let's say, right? A water wheel, okay? 
And as the water's flowing, and what's it causing the wheel to do? Turn. It's catching the paddles, it's <clears throat> causing the wheel to turn. Now you take a knife and you tie the knife onto <coughs> that water wheel and you maneuver the behema into a position. He's not talking halacha. Right? You maneuver. I'm only thinking halacha. Right? You maneuver the behema into that position. And as the wheel comes around, it shechs the behema. Okay? So what's the halacha about such a, such a wheel? Says the b'risa. Remember, Navida, b'risa, not the halacha. What does the b'risa say? The b'risa says, Hashochet b'muchni shechitaso kshera. Right? That if I shecht with a muchni, if I shecht, shecht with my knife attached to a wheel, in other words, it's an automatic shechita, it's a machine shechita in effect, mutter. Oh, wait a second. We are, that's not permissible according to halacha, right? You can't have a shechita machine, correct? No, you can't have a shechita machine. So we have to understand what this is talking about. But this is the b'risa. Let's first at least hear the wording of the b'risa. I shecht I shat with my muchni, with my machine, with my knife tied to my wheel. Shchitaso kshera. Bimechubar lekarka. If I shecht with something which is attached to the ground, shchitaso kshera. What is? What am I saying? The shchita is good. Okay. Naat sakin ba kotel. I stick my knife into the wall. Vishachat ba, and I move the animal's neck over the knife. Shchitaso kshera. Hayat, the fourth case, which is brought down in this b'risa, hayat sur yotze min hakotel. There was a rock, a sharp rock, sticking out from the wall, carved out of the wall. Okana ola me'elav, or a, or a reed, right, a piece of bamboo, which is coming up, that, that I've sharpened, but it's still attached to the ground. Meshachat bo shchitaso psula. The shchita is no good. We have four cases here, but they don't, it doesn't make sense because there's a contradiction. What do we say? We say, if I shecht with something which is the b'risa says, but then it says, if I shecht with a rock, which is stuck in a wall, a rock, which is from a wall or a reed growing from the ground, it's no good. Don't those two things contradict each other? So, so next page, okay. 16A1, Tess Zion Amar Aleph at the top, says the Gemara, Kashi Nahadadi. The Brysa seems to contradict itself because it's giving us two different cases, both of which seem to be Mechubar Lakarka. In one of them it says kosher, and in one of them it says no good. El Lalav Shmamina, Shiny Bain Mechubar Meikaro, Letalush Ulubasov Chibro Shmamina. So the Gemara says, no, we really do have four cases, right? How can, what, what are our four cases, right? We have something which is talush, right? Something which is completely separated. Then we have something which is talush and then muchobar, separated but reattached. That's the knife in the wall. And then we have our third case, which is the sharp flint, you know, carved out of the wall, or the reed which is growing from the ground, which was never ever detached, and in those cases it's puzzle. So the only way we can explain this is by saying that there's a difference between something which is, which has always been mechubar, and something which was detached but then reattached. We still don't know why there's a difference. That's Natan's question. But we're saying logically, the only way to explain this is to assume that there's a difference between these things, right? It's the only way to create another case, which is what we're doing. We're creating another case. And so exactly why, what's the svara, why that works or why that's not good, we'll have to come to. But the Gemara is saying from here, this is our source for the fact that there must be this middle of the road uh, scenario. In other words, not just completely detached, not just something which was never detached, but something which was detached and reattached. That's what our mission is talking about. 
that's where Rebbe says Bidiyevet. But if something was never detached, no. which is not our Mishnah, Rebbe would say Pasal. That was the Bryce of the Rebbe Kahana brought, brought down. Okay? So, so far, everything is working. Everything is working. The Gemara is going to, though, ask an interesting case. And this is going to get us involved, well, probably not tonight, but this is going to get us involved in, in a very important halachic principle. Of water wheels, correct. We spend a lot of time on water wheels. <laughs> okay, so what do we have? All right, Vahatanya, the Gemara says, wait a second. Right, the right, right, Koach Rishon, the Gemara, right, the Gemara says, Vahatanya, wait a second. You're telling me that a wheel is good, right? Didn't we just say that a wheel was good? Vahatanya, we learn in a Braisa, Shechitaso Psula, that if you shecht with a wheel, it's possible. So I have one brysa that tells me if I shecht with the wheel, it's kosher. Another brysa that tells me if I shecht with the wheel, it's puzzle. How can I have two contradictory brysas like that? Because they're talking about two different scenarios. Correct. Says the Gemara, lo kashya. Right? <laughs> Says the Gemara, lo kashya. It's not a problem. Right? right? It's not a problem. Why? As John says, it's talking about two different well, scenarios. Thing, probably right? Ha bisarna de pachra. Ha bisarna de maya says the first opinion. It's talking about two different kinds of wheels. What are the two different kinds of wheels? One kind of wheel is a potter's wheel. How does a potter's wheel move? By your foot. By your foot. In other words, you have to constantly keep pressing down on that pedal to keep the potter's wheel spinning. So if I attach my knife to that potter's wheel, and it's going around. On whose force is making it going, making Personal making door. it go around? My foot. Ko koach gavra. Koach gavra. My foot <laughs> pushing down on that pedal is making this wheel go around. And therefore, when it shechs the animal, who just happens to be standing at the right. Right at the right, at the wrong spot, at the wrong time for him. Right, right. Checks the animal. It's considered. It's considered a good shechita with a potter's wheel. That's the brisa that says it's good. It's referring to a potter's wheel. The brisa that says it's not good is referring to a water wheel. Why is a water wheel not good? Because there's no Because it's not koach gav. A water wheel is not koach gavra. So one, so right, so so the, they don't, the they, right? They don't contradict each other, right? Right. One wheel, right? One wheel is a potter's wheel, which goes by koach gavra. The other wheel is a water wheel, which doesn't go by koach gavra. If it goes by koach gavra, the potter's wheel, it's a good shechita. If it doesn't go by koach gavra, the water wheel. It's not a good shechita. So for instance, if I put my knife on the table and there was a chicken on the floor, I put my knife on the table and what happened? There was an earthquake, right? And the whole house shook, the knife fell off the table and shechted the chicken, which would be a lot of bad luck for that chicken, right? <laughs> right? right? To be under a knife on a table during an earthquake, not a good thing, right? So the knife falls off the table, shechts the chicken. Is it a good shechita or not? Obviously not a good shita, because there's no koach gavra. That's the water wheel. That's the way in which the Gemara wants to understand these two brysos. When is the wheel good? When it's a potter's wheel. When is the wheel not good? When it's a water wheel. Or there's another way to understand it, says the Gemara. And I'm sure this will bring back good memories for you. All right. And what is that? Something called koach rishon and something called <laughs> koach shen, right? That actually both scenarios could be talking about a water wheel, but in the following, with the following difference. When is a water wheel good? The first a water wheel is good when the, the wheel shecks based on that first flow of water, you're allowing the water that right. came out when you lifted up the stop gate. Right, you lift it up the stop gate, the water rushes through, turns the wheel, shechs the animal, it's good. All right, second animal, no good. But the second animal, no good. 
right? The second animal who says, hey, what did that first animal see over here, right? <laughs> right? That second animal who comes and the water's still flowing. Now you started it flowing, but, but you didn't continue. But you didn't, you started it flowing. So that first flow is attributed to you. That's Koach Risha, we call it. But Koach Sheni that comes afterwards, so that's not attributed to you. And Koach Sheni, which comes afterwards, would, would invalidate the Shrita. So the second animal shafted would not be good. The only way you could shaft the second animal would be if you put the stop gate back in, right, and diverted the water got the animal in place, lifted the stop gate, it comes rushing through again. That's Koach Rishon again. Elliot, go What ahead. if you do, does, when you talk about Koach Rishon and Koach Shemu in the wheel, is that the whole shkita or just part of the shkita? <laughs> because like, for example, in the base of Mikdash, when we, we didn't have <coughs> a shahid with a longer amount of time, especially with the hema. Right. Okay, the big first uh, cut or two, you let the water wheel do it, and then you finish the rest of it. Just like the Kohen Gadol used to start shechting and the regular Kohen used to finish. The they would hand it off. So you were that. Oh, yeah. you know, the chicken so and water were. So what's the question that so you're So if you started me? with the wheel, right? And, and then you and continued with your knife. That would be fine. But if you started with the wheel and finished with the wheel, that would no, not be okay. good. But if you started with the wheel and finished with your knife, that would be good. That would okay. all be considered Koach Risha. Okay. And all right? Magical. And right. So it's interesting. Where where else do we have a you know where else do we have a, a little bit of an indication of this? Let's say that you uh, you know you need to right you're you're uh, you know you're you're having uh, bread for lunch and you need to wash, and you go uh, to a sink, and there's no kos there at the sink. Right? There's no kos at the sink. Right? No cup. No washing cup. How do you wash? You get a cup. No. That's all I know. You call the front desk and you say, <laughs> I need a washing cup. That's it. Right? How, right? How, do you, how do you wash? You turn the water on and then shut it off. Meaning the first amount of water that comes out of the faucet is considered your koach, which is what you need for washing. Why do we use a washing cup? We use a washing cup so it's your koach that spills the water over your hands. Well, if I put my hand under the faucet and then open it and shut it, that first amount of water that comes out is koach risha, right? And then I and then I do it again, right? And then I switch hands. What? It's the koach risha, no one is. Whatever volume comes, in other words, when I open it, that 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 first volume that comes out. I mean, Elliot is, I mean, Elliot, if you turn it on, right? I mean, right? Elliot, this is his last question. Let him ask it. Elliot's really, what <laughs> Elliot is really <laughs> asking, what Elliot is really asking down to the nitty gritty, <laughs> right? What Elliot is really asking is, which molecule of water do we consider, do we consider koach risha? That's exactly what it is. Right? It's exactly what he's the asking. In other words, the first thing that hits your hand is koach risha. But then after that, is it Koach Rishon? I mean, that's really what Elliot's asking, and it's a great question. In other words, how much is considered Koach Rishon? Right? How much is considered Koach Rishon? So, right? so the idea is, it, if I keep my hand under there, Elliot, right. it's only one Koach. Okay. In other words, I open it. Let's say I open it and just keep my hand underneath. And you need three. Right? No, need and I don't three. shut it off. Okay. Right? It's only considered one pouring over my hand. I have to shut it off and turn it on again for there to be a second pouring. Okay. Okay. So, or a, th or a third pouring, depending upon what you do. Two pourings or three pourings. Sorry. You mentioned Kwa Frisham. You turn it on once. But it just when Jared mentioned three times. Then you shut it off. Turn it back on. On and off three times. Correct. On and off. On and off. In other words, on, off. On, off, on, off, and then on, on off, on, off, on, 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 off. So now, six obviously, it's not the best thing to do, but if you're stuck and the front desk won't deliver a washing cup, that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Just by putting your hand under and pulling back. No, right? no, you can't that, put it under. That wouldn't work that, because, that work. because the water is not coming from co op Okay. It has to be like this. Got it. Okay. Okay, now, this is actually going to take us a little bit afield. I'll, I'll introduce you to the case, and then we'll stop. Says the, 
What? <laughs> Says the Gemara. V'chihad amar Rav Papa. What about this case of Rav Papa? Right? Which is, Haiman dekafte lechavre. You have a guy who tied up his friend. V'ashkil aleha bidka demaya. Umes. Chayev. Right? I tied up my friend and I put him, I, I tied him up and I put him in the bottom of a hole, bottom of a cistern. All right? And then I opened the gate, the water gate, and what happened? The water came in and drowned him. Am I Chayev? Have I killed this man or not? And we are going to now get into the halacha category of something called grama. In other words, what is grama? Right? Right? What, is, right? what is grama? Can I kill somebody? Can I halachically kill somebody and not be killed for it? Mir Tashem, we'll talk about that next week. Don't do anything rash until next week. Thank you.